Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful morning that you have called us, you have invited us to study together as a body of believers. And right now, we want to understand the most significant study of all. The last part of Christ's ministry before he comes the second time. That is entering the Holy of Holies or the Most Holy Place. This morning, we invite you to enlighten us, to show us the implication of this heavenly ministry or the high priestly ministry of Jesus. How he removed the veil and invited us in. So today, we pray that you will cleanse our hearts, clear our mind, so that we can come before the presence of God boldly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, let me share screen. Okay, hope you can see. This is today's topic. The Holy of Holies. Jesus opened the veil. Opened the way to the veil. Okay. So, the sanctuary and its services and the feast were a representation of Jesus. We can better understand the work that Jesus has been doing before the Father in the heavenly sanctuary since he ascended to heaven by studying the symbols in the sanctuary. You know, I thank God that our church has a vast understanding on the sanctuary message because many Christians ignorantly uh, neglected or neglect or has been neglecting the study of the Old Testament, especially the sanctuary service. And without understanding the sanctuary service, we cannot fully understand the New Testament teaching in the book of Hebrews. So today, we'll be covering this area, how to come before God. What could prevent us from coming before God? And that is a very important implication when you study the sanctuary. And how to remove the impediments or the hindrances. Okay, so these are the three main topics for sub main topics. Okay, Anthony, could you read this uh, text for us? Hebrews 9, 24. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us, Okay, thank you. Now, this is a very important text people do not realize. It is so clear that Jesus, after his ascension to heaven, he did not enter into the physical temple made with hands. Talking about the Mosaic covenant, the Mosaic tabernacle but referring to the figures of the truth. So in other words, when Moses constructed the tabernacle, he was given a vision on how it, the heaven, heavenly tabernacle looked like. So this earthly covenant or earthly tabernacle was made with hands according to what was shown to Moses. But since Jesus died on the cross, the veil between the temple was torn into two, right? Signifying that the earthly tabernacle is no longer in place. Okay. So it's no longer in place means what? It is an old covenant. So therefore, the earthly covenant is no more. The earthly uh, tabernacle is no more. Jesus right now is in the most holy place. So all this high priestly ministry that is done, like the Day of Atonement, the festivals, 
that have been done in the Old Testament is no longer valid. We call it obsolete. And right now, Jesus is in the most holy place. So this is a very significant text. Jesus entered into the he heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God. Wow. Very, very startling, isn't it? Jesus appeared before the, the throne of God. So the Israelites, eh, you must understand, eh, they have three times to appear before God. Okay, in the sanctuary, in the Old Testament. Three times a year. These feasts represented specific moments when Jesus would come before the Father as a representative. Okay, these are the pilgrim feasts. Like for example, there are believers in the Old Testament or during yeah. Jesus' time. Right. They would come from different places, okay, from far away places and come to Jerusalem. So, which are the three uh, festivals? Number one is the Passover feast. Okay, they call it the Feast of Weeks. And then we have the Feast of the First Fruits or the Pentecost. Then we have the Feast of the Tabernacles or Feast of the Harvest. So, on these three occasions, people will make a special trip to Jerusalem, okay? To get to know, get to see God, to experience the presence of God. So, as you can see, right now we don't celebrate the Passover feast because Jesus died on the Passover sacrifice. Okay. And Jesus was resurrected on the day the wave sheaf or the first fruits was offered. So he came to the Father to be approved by him. And after Jesus was ascended, he was exalted. He inaugurated the heavenly sanctuary and sent the Holy Spirit to us in the day of Pentecost. And then the Feast of Tabernacles was fulfilled, were to be fulfilled in the second coming, where Jesus will take us with him to a place he's preparing and he will introduce us to God. So you can see, although we don't celebrate the feast, it's good to study about this. And then you realize that Jesus has fulfilled all these ceremonial laws or practices that points to Jesus. So Jesus is the fulfillment of the law referring to the ceremonial law, not the moral law. The moral law still stands, right? It is eternal. Let's ask this question. Uh, Paul, can you ask, uh, read this? Okay, good morning. Again, why should the reality of what Christ has done, not only on the cross, but what he is doing now in heaven, give us assurance of salvation? Okay, maybe you can attempt to answer this one. Huh? You know, Jesus has died on the cross, right? He is resurrected and he is in heaven. So a lot of people just focus on the cross. And that's it. They forget that uh, what Jesus is doing now. So what he is doing now, how does it give us the assurance of salvation? Or you think it's not important? No, of course it's very important. Yeah. It's just that uh, everything that Christ done uh, on earth, you know, is a is a semblance of what uh, could be happen in heaven. And if He had already done, if the promise had, if the promises uh, were done and was given, and had already been done, and Jesus had gone through all the step, then we know that the next step will definitely, uh, definitely assured also. I mean, what I mean is that if he gave the promises and he had done the wrong and he had done what he promised to do, then the next step will only follow. So see, Jesus had already died for us, promised us salvation through his death, and that death has already been done. So the next step is salvation uh, as a reward 
for those who believe in him and so on. Okay, thank you. Okay, can I, yeah, uh, okay. No, can I just uh, add something? Because earlier on you say that uh, in your previous slide, uh, can you go back to the previous slide? Because I think there's some uh, uh, misunderstanding there. Okay, the, the Passover is not the Feast of the Weeks, okay? The Feast of Weeks is the, is the Pentecost. Oh, okay. Yeah, and the, the Feast of First Fruit is also not, not Pentecost. Pentecost is uh, 50 days after the Fifty days after the pass, day of Passover, so I, I think that part need to be, need to be uh, understood properly. Okay, let me check and uh, get back to you. Thank you for okay. the correction. Yeah. Okay, let's let's deal with this question. You see, Jesus has died on the cross. When you believe in Him, you are justified, as if you have no sin. Okay, then Jesus was resurrected. He was uh, he he has ascended, and right now he is in heaven, appearing before the, the Father. Ah, these are the steps huh, that has significance. Number one, when Jesus became the high priest, the duty of the priest is to intercede for us. So after we accept Jesus as our Savior. We are still, we still have to struggle with sin, isn't it? Uh, we still have to live on earth. We are still have to overcome our sin. We still have to come close to God. We have to get to know God. Okay. So this is a very important point that when you accept Jesus who died for you on the cross, you still have to grow in Christ. Okay. So when Jesus appeared before the heavenly father, we do not need to go through a priest anymore. We can go straight to Jesus. We can go straight to God because of Jesus. So this is a very powerful assurance of salvation. Now in the Old Testament, those saints would like to know God better. They will come before God. Okay, We can ask, Elder Hadiano, to read this for us. Good morning and blessed Sabbath. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, seek my face. My heart says to you, your face, Lord, do I seek. Okay, Elder Hadiano, are, are you going to church later? Yeah, I'm going to church. Sorry, Pastor, I will... Uh, leave probably another uh, 15 minutes. Okay. <laughs> Just get to know, get you to participate later. Huh? Yeah. Okay. okay. We ask maybe uh, Sister Yuka to read this. Oh, Sister Yuka is not yet ready. <laughs> oh, never mind. We ask somebody else. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Can we ask Victor to read this for us, Victor? Okay. When you heard the voice out of the darkness or the mountain was ablaze with fire. All the leading men of your tribes and all your elders came to me. And you say, the Lord our God has shown, shown us his glory and his majesty and we have heard his voice from fire. Today you have seen the man can live even if God speaks with him. But now why should we die? This great fire will consume us and we will die if we heard the voice of the Lord our God any longer. For what water man, mortal men have ever heard the voice of the living God speaking of fire as we have and survived? Go near and listen to all the land of the Lord our God said. Tell us whatever our Lord our God tell you, we will listen and obey. Okay, this is a text uh, to show that uh, the Israelites was asked to come to God. Okay, but then they say, no, 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 we don't want to come because we have seen how God is a, is a consuming fire. And then his voice only can kill us. What more to come before him? So they asked Moses, why don't you go on our behalf? And uh, whatever you, he, God tell you, we will obey. So actually that is the beginning of their downfall. They are afraid to come before God. 
How many people today are also afraid to come to God because they feel very unworthy? They don't have the clear understanding of God. They think that God is actually a very angry God to be at peace. Okay. Uh, Sister Helen, read this verse, please. Thank you. He got swallowed by a fish. Huh? We, uh, is it the, uh, Hebrews 12? Yes. You have not come to a mountain that can be touched, and that is burning with fire, to darkness, yeah. gloom, and storm, to a trumpet blast, or to it such a voice speaking out. words, that those who heard it begged that no further word would be spoken to them. And he was stuck in Because they could not the bear army. what was comfort, commanded. <laughs> If even an Rainy animal day. touches the mountain, it must be stoned. The sight was A so week. terrifying that Moses said, I am trembling with fear. Okay, Sister Helen, thank you. I think your grandson is having a good time. He is having his Sabbath school next to me. But I, I can't <laughs> lower his voice, but he gets louder and louder. Sorry. <laughs> okay, you can see it. Eh? Even Moses himself was very afraid to come before God, but nevertheless he did. Okay. You see, Paul graphically described the moment God showed himself to Israel at Sinai to speak to them. Although there was a security perimeter, the experience was terrible. Okay. So paraphrase, he says, we understand we can hear and still live but please stop speaking or we will all die so they, their faith faltered so they asked moses to mediate between god and them and that was not god's original plan because they were supposed to be a nation of, of priests a priesthood you know and god wanted his people to come close to him to share his holiness his mercy and his compassion can you imagine the purpose of building the tabernacle so that God can dwell with them. Okay? God can dwell with them. God wants to live with them. Okay, we can ask Julius to read this for us. Because of Jesus, why should we not be afraid to draw near to holy God. What are the conditions, however, for us to be able to draw near? Okay. There is a reason why the Old Testament believers were afraid because of the destruction of the Egyptians, the plagues, the pillar of fire, you know, and so on. And God was seen to be a frightening, terrible God. But because of Jesus, why should not why should we not be afraid? Okay. So what are the conditions for us to draw near to God? Maybe you can attempt to answer that. You know, uh as soon as um we will die before God because of our sin. Yeah. So only Jesus can mediate for us, I fully thought, that way. For us to physically draw near, I think it's not possible because of our sinful nature. But we, we stand behind Jesus and say, hey, Jesus, thank you for mediating for us. We are safe now. That's the way I look at it. Yeah. By the way, just to tell you, if you're not seeing the, the power of God, go, you should look at the video of Mount Sinai. The whole mountain is black, you know, and the, the, that's the rock that's split. And people say that the rock is burned all the way into the core of the rock. So can you imagine how much power and, that God has on Mount Sinai? You know, when Jesus came to this earth, he came as a veil. This veil is actually a barrier. 
if he did not come as a as human, he came totally as God, we will all be consumed. That's why the incarnation of Jesus is a very powerful uh, gospel. Jesus came as man as well as God to show how God is like, to reveal God's character. God is actually a God of love. So if you have time, uh, study the book of uh, the gospel of John. Okay, and then in the epistles, you will, you will understand that God's love uh, is scattered all over this gospel to reveal that God is a God of love. He is a holy God at the same time. So, sorry, uh, Pastor, I just want to add, uh, the Bible says that we, sh- we can come boldly before the throne of God, in a sense. But regarding what are the conditions, I, I'm, I'm not sure of any conditions uh, that God plays and so on, but the only, I think the important thing is that we have to, to know is that we cannot be presumptuous and so on. But if God invited us to come visit him, we can come to him boldly. Like, when, when, like for example, when Moses go up to, uh, to Mount Sinai, he only went up when God invited him to go up. But if, if God did not invite him to go, he, he, he did not even ascend uh, uh, to uh, Mount Sinai. So I think we, we can come boldly before the throne of God, yes, but we cannot be presumptuous in any sense and so on. Only when you, when you are invited, then we can, we can uh, boldly go up to see God. Yeah. Okay, that is the Old Testament. Right? But now, now there is no more barrier, right? Because of what Jesus has done. We can enter boldly before the throne of God. The only barrier that we have is we are still living in sin. That is, I'm talking about uncompressed sin. Okay. When, you are, when you come before God, thinking that, assuming that, presuming that you God has forgiven your sin, it actually is not. You did not confess. Um, you, you do not experience the presence of God. Okay. Somebody has written something. Okay, a condition to draw near. A broken spirit. A broken and contract heart. Yes. Okay. Gladys, thank you. That's correct. Huh? So one of the conditions is that you must appear before God. Uh, with a contract heart. And God loves a person who is, because he said, blessed are the mourn, uh, those who mourn, right? They mourn over their sinfulness. Okay? And God will give, will, will comfort them. So it's, it is a comforting thing uh, to come before God when you are filled with, when you are destitute of sin. Okay? When you are so broken in your spiritual condition when you feel that you are thirsting and hungering for God when you realize that you are poor in spirit in other words you fulfill all the beatitudes beatitudes means uh, the attitudes that you need to adopt to come near before God even those people who are persecuted because of righteousness they can come before God. And then those people who are peacemakers, okay, they need to intercede for people. They, they are the one who help to reconcile uh, opposing parties. These are the people who are representatives of God. They can come boldly before the throne. Yeah, thank you very much for your contribution. We ask Pearl to read this for us. Pearl, Leviticus. Good morning, everybody. And the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, your brother, not to come at just any time into the holy place inside the veil, before the mercy seat which is on the ark. Please he died, for I will appear in the cloud above the mercy seat. Yes, thank you. Just like what uh, Paul just now said, uh, God has to invite us. Okay, we cannot anyhow come. There was a human security parameter around the sanctuary. Okay, 
so people will not come too close to God and die. Okay, for example, this is the parameter. The 12 tribes of Israel is supposed to camp around the sanctuary. Okay, those who are not believers cannot come into this parameter. The priests were the intercessors between God and the people. So for them, they can go inside the sanctuary. Uh, the, they can go to the outer court and the holy place. We are priests today and we are called to connect to God with those who do not know yet, know him yet. So you can see uh, there are three veils uh, in the sanctuary. The first one is the veil to the outer court. Okay, So a, a sinner who will confess his sin can enter. And then he cannot enter the holy place. Only the priest can enter. And then the high priest can only enter once a year. So this one that uh, you can enter every day. They call it the daily. Right? And this one, uh, you can enter only by the priests and the Levites. And this one, by the most holy place, by the high priest. So a veil prevented the worshippers from entering the sanctuary. They could only enter during the day. The second veil could only be crossed by those who had a special covenant with God, priests. The third veil prevented anyone, everyone except the high priest from having direct contact with God. So Jesus is the veil that allows us to live within, to live within us without us being consumed. So this is the good news. Okay. We ask Chris to read this for us. Chris, are you there? I think she has left. Okay, we can ask Aliza Tan. Can you read this for us? Hebrews chapter 10. Kindly unmute, you can read this for us. Hebrew 10, 19 to 21. Therefore, brother and sister, since we have confidence to enter the most highly praised by the blood of Jesus. Verse 20. By a new and living way, open for us through the curtain that is his body. Verse 21. And since we have a great priest over our house of God, verse 22, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings. Ah, thank you. So now to this verse, and you know how to end, come before God's presence. You come before God's presence through Jesus as the high priest. Okay, Before you come to Jesus, you must understand that Jesus is the curtain, right? Is through his body, through his death. So you must understand about the sanctuary service and what he has done right now. So if you don't understand the sanctuary service, you don't understand the significance of coming before God and how to come before God. So with this understanding, Jesus right now is the, the high priest that lives forever. We can come confidently come before God. Okay? But how? The condition is we must come with a sincere heart. The sincere heart is what? A heart that is contract, that is broken. And with the full assurance that faith brings. I tell you, if you do that, then your faith can grow. Because it, that's how you spend time with God and be closer to God. Okay? So a lot of people talk about, hey, how to be, come close to God. This is the way. Okay? The new and living way. Jesus is not only the veil that allows God to live in us. He is also the open veil that created a new way to God's presence. And this new way is the new covenant that Jesus sealed with his blood. 
Now, before Jesus died, Satan was in God's presence to accuse us, as you can see in uh, Zechariah. How he accused uh, the high priest, Joshua. Okay. However, Jesus began his high priestly ministry in the heavenly sanctuary after he ascended. Jesus was, uh, sorry, Satan was permanently expelled from heaven from then onwards. And Jesus came before the Father as our advocate. So before Jesus went to the sanctuary, the most holy place, Satan was allowed to make accusations that we are not worthy. But ever since Jesus entered the most holy place, Satan right now is confined on earth. That's why in Revelation, it says he knows his time is short. So when Jesus entered the most holy place, that is the end of prophetic time. And that is the beginning of the last days. And as the beginning of the last days means what? Jesus will one day finish his heavenly uh, ministry, intercessory ministry. Once he's completed he will come. And Satan and his angels, the fallen angels, will be forever confined on this earth. And those who are alive, those who are dead in Christ will be resurrected. And those who are alive will be caught up and will spend time with God for 1,000 years. And after 1,000 years, he will come and destroy the resurrected wicked and together with the Satan and his angels. And these are all found in Revelation. So the earthly ministry and the heavenly ministry has to be studied. Okay. And Jesus fulfilled all this old covenant ministry. It has great impact on our new covenant, our understanding of the new covenant. Okay, right now we ask uh, Anthony to read these words. And we all who, who with unreal faces contemplate the God's, the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Corinthians 3 18. Okay, since you are at it, then why don't you ask the question that you have typed? Uh, Anthony? I don't know. Eh. <laughs> okay, you uh, say what? Sinful men will die in the presence of God due to their sins, right? Right. Although Satan is sinful, why didn't he die when he was in God's presence? Because he is an uh, angel. That's why he didn't die at the, in the presence of God, although he's been sinful. Uh, okay. Uh, Satan was not built with the same body as ours. Uh. Okay. Uh, Satan has to be has to be what separated from God because of sin. No, sin brought separation. And Jesus is the mediator between sinners and God. Okay. Now, Satan has a different... Salvation was not given to Satan and his angels. Okay. And we are not going to discuss that because it's a mystery of the gospel. Uh, they have already spent so much time with God. They are close to God. They did not fall into sin. They choose to sin. Okay. So that's another theology. We are not going to go into and most important of all, Satan did not die immediately because there was an accusation that God is not a God of love. So the whole universe is uh, watching the unfolding of Satan's lie. So the lie of the, the devil has to be exposed. So that needs time. So when Jesus died on the cross, that was the final nail on the coffin of Satan, right? Of Lucifer. 
And then when Jesus entered the most holy place, he was expelled from heaven. The whole universe know that Satan's lies are fully exposed. Okay, thank you. Okay, we ask uh, Victor to read this verse. You have come to Mount Zion and the city of the living God and heavenly Jerusalem and to innumerable multitudes of angels. Okay, it's from Hebrews 12, verse 22. Okay, we can read that again. We ask uh, Paul to read this verse. Hebrews 12. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, whose name are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all men, to the spirits of righteous men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks better, that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Okay. Now coming into God's presence. This is the crux of what Jesus is doing. Even though we are waiting for his heavenly intermediary ministry to complete, right now, from now, from the time when Jesus entered the most holy place until he complete his ministry, when he complete, then he will come. So while he while waiting for him to come, we can come into God's presence. And that is the most important message. So God's manifestation at Sinai was surrounded by darkness. Now in that verse we have just read, Paul introduced a different manifestation. This time full of glory and light, Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem, the choir of angels praising God, and God sitting on his throne and making the firstborn, that is Jesus, that brought with his blood, okay, righteous, and Jesus our mediator. So what happened? This vision of the day, we will celebrate the Feast of the Tabernacles with Jesus in heaven. But it is more than that. It is a vision for today. Today, we are already there. We have already come into God's presence, except that we are not there physically but we can be there spiritually. So our representative is already there. Jesus is already there. He has appeared before God on our behalf. So that's why it says, let's walk every day as seeing him who is invisible. That's why it requires faith. When you understand the significance of Jesus appearing before the Father since uh, the end of prophetic, prophetic time, in 1844, until the, the second coming. From now till that time, we are able to walk with Jesus in a powerful way, knowing that he is appearing on our behalf in the presence of God. So a lot of people say, hey, uh, when you appear before God, what do you say? No, that is about understanding what God is, uh, who God is. If you appear before God, uh, you can forget about asking about things that are so mundane, uh, so insignificant. That's why a lot of Christians who are growing in Christ, they don't understand this powerful message. When you appear before God, there's nothing you need right, except thanksgiving. There's nothing you need except praises. There's nothing you need except listening to His voice and uh, responding to his call. That's why it's not, not so important uh, about answered prayer anymore. Okay? Because the things of this earth uh, will pale in comparison with understanding God and coming before his presence. Okay, can we ask Cynthia to read? Uh, Julius, can you ask Cynthia to read this? The intercession of Christ 
in man's behalf in the century above is as essential to the plan of salvation as was his death upon the cross. By his death, he began that work, which after his resurrection, he ascended to complete in heaven. We must by faith enter within the veil, whither the forerunner is for us entered. Hebrews 6.20, Jesus has opened the way to the Father's throne and through his mediation, the sincere desire of all who come to him in faith may be presented before God. Okay, so I hope today all of us have learned the important implication of coming before the throne of God. It's not just about getting our prayers answered. I think it's much more than that. It's having a full assurance that our sins are forgiven. Okay, it is a full assurance. You, when people were to ask you, how sure are you safe? This is actually a fundamental question we should not ask anymore as mature Christians. The right question to ask is, um, how close are you to God? Or how much do you really love Him? What do you do to, to respond to his call? I think this is the more uh, important question that God wants to hear from us. And then the most important thing right now is understanding this teaching. How does it change your perception about God? Change your appreciation of how you see how you view the sacrifice of Christ and what honor was or is given to him right now so can you imagine how powerful that would be when you understand this fully and at the same time exercise this privilege of coming near to God Okay, any question, comments, anything else to add? You can type it out or you can contribute. You can even share what you have learned today and uh, praise God for what you have learned. We still have a lot of time. Any question? Yes, Pastor. I would yes. like to know when we come to God present, do we need to sanctify ourselves and to cleanse us, to repent and to make us because God is so holy? Okay. So in other words, do we need to cleanse ourselves before we come before God? Is yes, then we need to have the deal with our our unseen, unknowing sins, repent, sanctify, set us apart, and then to do in other words, that it is not as and when we can go into the holy or holy. We need to have a few steps to deal with before we go into the holy or holy to meet God. Okay. Maybe anyone here can answer Eliza's question. Yes, Paul. No, I was thinking, uh, when you say uh, when we appear before God, are you referring to God? The Father or God Jesus? God the Father. Or I don't think we are able to approach uh, I don't think we are able to approach God the Father because you know, no one, not even the angels in heaven also can approach God the Father. If you say God the Son, Jesus Christ, then it's possible. But we know that the sensual service on earth does not, uh, I mean, it's is no more available anymore, so we can approach God in faith. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, your question is whether you 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 try to approach God the Father or God the Son. It's just like we need to be um tear down the veil to meet God, meet His presence. I don't know whether we should we should it, it should be is uh, meet the Jesus first, right? Because Jesus and the Father are one; they are the same quality. Am I right? So, well, we, I think we can uh, we can approach God by by faith and by prayer. 
can pray to God or to God, God the Father. We can pray to Jesus anytime we want, you know, in faith and so on. But whether to prepare ourselves, whether to clean ourselves first and so on, I, I'm not sure about this thing, but I know that in, in the olden days when the sanctuary service was still around, the, the priests who minister in the sanctuary, before they go into the holy place, on the most holy place, they have to wash themselves completely first, use the leg, the hands, and, you know, get themselves clean before they go into it because God is a, a holy place. And not only that, they also even take out the shoes too because it's a holy place. So this is how the, uh, the earthly priests approach God before. So, but now I, I don't think we, I, I don't think I would even uh, suggest approaching God the Father, but we can approach God the, maybe by faith, but not personally. Okay, anyone else? Before um, pass, I, yeah. I would like to read Romans 1 verse 5 where it says, we have received grace and apostleship through him to bring about the obedience of faith among all the nations on behalf of his name. So you see the word grace and you see the word obedience here. And um, I think before we approach God, we have to first confess our sins, make sure we make right with him before. If not, if not I don't think he'll hear us. What about the rest? Anything else to add? There are several privileged people who have been in the presence of God. Moses is one of them. But we don't talk about the high priest. Once a year, on the Day of Atonement, they go to the most holy place. That is where God's presence is. And that is a privilege. How many people have the privilege? So only the high priest have that, but you know, that is an awesome experience to, to be next near to God in his presence. So that, that's a humbling and awe-inspiring actually. Okay. Anyone else before I give my answer? And one more question it is, what is the difference that when in the church uh, worship, uh, that when there is high worship, we can feel God's presence? Okay. Let me answer your question earlier. Coming before God. Let's read this again uh, in uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 and 21. Eliza, would you read, read that again? Okay. Hebrews 10. Therefore, brother and sister, sin we... Since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, verse 20, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain, that is his body, verse 21. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, verse 22, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings. Okay. Let the Bible speak for it. For itself. Huh? Apostle Paul, who wrote the book of Hebrews, he concluded by saying, Therefore, brothers and sisters, means what? Talking about believers who have been saved by the grace through faith. Since we have confidence to enter the most holy place. So, brothers and sisters who are saved, right now they understand that Jesus has entered the most holy place. Okay, And since we have the high priest over the household of God, let us, so in other words, we can draw near to God. We can appear before the presence of God through Jesus. We cannot enter the presence of God without Him. You understand? So when, when you say enter before the presence of God through Jesus, means what? you have to accept His sacrifice. On your behalf. That's one. You must be justified. Number two. Uh, you must understand that he is your high priest. So in other words, he is your intercessor. So that you can grow in faith. Let us draw near to God. Means what? You can come before the presence of God. Through Jesus. You can. You can't do it by yourself. Like what the rest have said. 
you have to go through Jesus. Okay, that's why when we pray, we pray in Jesus' name. There are some people who pray, they don't follow the proper way to pray. They pray directly to Jesus. Jesus said, no, you must pray in my name. And then some people, when they say, dear God, our heavenly father, they ended with the, we pray in your name. We pray in the father's name. This is also wrong. You see? That's why it's so important to address God as the heavenly father. And then praise him, adoration, confession, and then supplication. Then finally pray in Jesus' name. So we, we draw near to God through prayer. We draw near to God through his word. We draw near to God by growing in Jesus. Uh, of course, one day when we go to heaven, we will have a new body. And this new body, we can come before the throne of God anytime. Okay? Just like the angels. I hope I have answered your question. Yes, thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you, everyone, for your contribution. When we come before the throne of God, let me say, we don't just talk about our requests. Okay, request is just part of it. We need to praise God. We need to come close to God. We need to learn to love Him. Then we can grow in faith. Let's pray. Dear God and Heavenly Father, You are a great and holy God. You are omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipotent. I pray that all these powerful qualities that You have, cause many people to be afraid to come near to you. But Lord, we thank you for Jesus. For he has shown your character when he lived on earth. He has sacrificed his life and he has ascended and he has entered the most holy place. Let us today to accept Jesus as our personal savior again. Forgive our sins, the known and unknown. As we search our hearts, as we study your word, help us to understand what Jesus is doing. Continue to be our high priest to intercede for us. And as we pray for others, may you hear our prayers to that the prayers for others will be answered. And right now, knowing that Jesus is appearing before, the, before you, dear Father, on our behalf, help us to come close to you, to appreciate you as a loving God, a powerful God, and a God who wants to spend time with us. So today, may we have a closer walk with you, today and every day, until you send your Son, Jesus, to bring us home. Lord, we look forward to the day where Jesus will complete his high priestly ministry. We look forward to the day where all these wars and rumors of war, pestilence will come to an end. We hope that we will stay faithful through the powerful name of Jesus and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Help us to stay faithful until the end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you next week, brothers and sisters. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor. You're welcome. Thank you, Pastor.